possibilities with Madam CJ and Rick D with two C's. Anything else is disrespectful right here on In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everyone is a star. And of course, I want to hear from you. I'm going to need y'all to call in because we got some great stuff to talk about. Call me at 813-444-9588. Again, it's 813-444-9588. And make sure if you haven't already, text a friend to text a friend to tune in to www.inhyphentouchnews.com or intouchnews.com. We want you guys to listen. We want you guys to tune in. Make sure you guys are sharing this. Share, you know, I'm, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook right now. Let people know, honey, because I have something to say. And come on in the room. I used to, in, in in the old in the old days, they used to sing a song. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Jesus, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do. It. Oh yeah, <laughs> not today, right? But come on in the room if you are following my Instagram or my my Facebook. Make sure you share it. Let people know that I am on the air. A lot of people are have been have been talking to me about getting on the air. So if you want to be a part of this show, Trap Talk Radio, you know what we talk about on here. We talk about we want to highlight those people that are making their dreams come true. It is not easy to make your dreams come true. It is not easy to follow a path and want to um and and not fit into the mode that the world has put us in and that's what we highlight on this show along with talking about whatever's going on in the world and what's popular you know we got to talk about all of that stuff but if you want to be on our show please let us know you can inbox us on our trap talk radio show we have an Instagram, we have a Facebook. You can email us at traptalkradioshow at gmail.com and make sure you let us know if you want to be a sponsor. We have sponsorship um places that we're looking for sponsors now if you want to be on here you want to be interviewed we have the place for you so you guys know oh, look at my little hair my hair is doing something here yeah y'all like my little dominican waves honey i got me i got my dominican waves today i did a little twist out and it's doing something funky but oh well it's gonna have to work out look it's gonna have to work out today my dj over here he ain't even paying attention to me y'all but it's all good it's all good he helped me out at all but it is okay it's oh a okay so there we go. I'm still looking crazy, but I got something to say. So one thing I learned in the trap this week is you cannot be worried about how people perceive you. Right. And I'm saying, I'm telling you this. And as I'm worrying about how my hair looks on the air right now, right. <laughs> my eyebrows look good though. My eyebrows look good, but you can't be concerned about how people perceive you. And another thing that I, that I, and I'm going to get to that. But the first thing that I wanted to start off by saying is, we have to be careful not to give people our visions, right? I think a lot of times when, when we have vision, it's, it's important for us to have a team. You got to have people that's going to help you out. You got to have people that's going to support you and is going to push your vision to the next level. That is important. But you cannot forget that that vision is still your responsibility. I feel like one of the things that I've learned in the trap over the last two weeks, because last week we wasn't on the air live, is I feel like sometimes I've given people my I've given people the responsibility of my vision. You cannot do that. No matter what support you have that's going to help that's going to help push your dream or going to help push you to the next level. That vision is still your vision. I do believe that God gives us he gives us direction and he gives us guidance, right? He gives it to us for a reason. For what what for whatever reason that is for you. Some people have a gift um, and a vision to create a software. You have a, a gift and a vision to serve people. In whatever capacity that God gives you that direction, remember, he gave that direction to you for a reason, right? This little piece right here is killing me. He gave it to you for a reason. It is not your job to hand it off. It's not your job to slack in certain areas and then feel a certain type of way because people didn't pick it up. It's not their vision, right? It's okay for you to take people along. It's okay for you to make sure that you have a good support system and have people in place to execute things um, to, to, to the next level because we can't do everything, right? We can't do everything, especially when we're trying to run an empire, we're trying to make things happen, we're trying to work, we're trying to build families. You cannot do everything, and that is okay. But at the end of the day, it is still on you. At the end of the day, your vision and your dreams still the, are responsibility of you. So remember that. Remember that. When the going gets tough, it's okay. When things fall short, it's okay. It is still your responsibility to see it through. If that thing is not saw through, it's on you. 
It's on you. And I, that's something I have to learn. That's, but that's not an easy pill to swallow, especially when you have people that come along and, and you know, they, they're they going to support you, they're your partners or whatever, when they don't necessarily execute things in the way you need it to be executed or if they don't, if they don't have much passion and much drive, as much drive as you when it came to certain things, that's okay because it's not their vision. It's not their dream. Right. They are there for support. We have to remember that when people are there for support, let them be support. Do not put that. Don't, don't put any more on them than what they're there for. You are not going to expect the lawn man to paint your house. Right. If you, you you're setting yourself up for failure. If they're there, to, if they're there to mow your lawn, let them do. Let them be the best lawn mower in the world. You start asking them to paint a house, and then you mad because they ain't paint the house right. Wait, wait a minute. That that wasn't his job. I sent him there for a certain for a, for a reason or whatever. So that's one thing I want to make sure that you guys know. As you're in the trap and, and you're doing your thing and you're making your dreams come true, do not forget that your dreams are your dreams. They don't belong to anybody else. They're not anyone else's responsibility. And Remember that when people come and they go and they don't have the energy and they don't have the time and they don't they don't help you take things to the next level or, or their, their, their ability to help you take things to a certain level stops. Love them where they at and don't be mad about it because they can't go to the next level because it's not it is not on them. And I think a lot of times when depending on depending on your role in there, your vision or whatever or what you have to not your role, depending on what you have to execute. It is easy and it and, and it's it's easy to get caught up in everything. That is why it's okay to have people on your team. That is why it's okay to have support. Have your support. Have those people that's gonna help you. But remember they are there, they are there to to help. It is not their job. So whatever God has given you, whatever and and, and then and then in that, right, don't be afraid to be who you are. I think Throughout my entire life, CJ Spencer, Cedrica Spencer, you know, however you know me, in whatever way that you met me or whatever, I have been known to intimidate people, right? People have said, oh, Drink intimidate me. Cedrica intimidate me. CJ intimidate me. I don't care nothing about none of that. Never have. Never have. Number one, the people that are around me that are that I want around me. Hey, how are you? Remember, if you're watching me on my live, on my Facebook, on my Instagram, please make sure that you share this broadcast. Um, yeah, share the broadcast. And then make sure you call in because I want to hear your opinion. 813-444-9588. Again, it's 813-444-9588 right here on In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everyone is a star. I think they should make that that they're like their um the commercial when I say that. I'm going to talk to Mr. Daryl. I'm going to talk to OG Daryl, see if he want to make me his commercial. But his wife probably got to put a stamp on that. But anyway, I love you, Miss Tammy. <laughs> but people have always said, you know, there's there's been someone around that said, oh, you know, CJ intimidates me or Cedrica intimidates me. Okay. The people that I want around me, that I want around me every day, all day, I don't intimidate those people. I empower those people. They empower me. Right? The, we, we, we rubbing shoulders with each other. We making each other better. We sharpening each other. If I intimidate you, you don't need to be around me. That's what it is. If I intimidate you, I make you uncomfortable by the, the powerhouse that I am. Uh-oh, we got a call. Okay. This is Trap Talk Radio. Who we got on the line? Uh, this is uh, the Real Light Skin Jones, Chris in the building. How you doing, Mr. Hey, Jones? how are you? I'm blessed, baby. I'm blessed. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for calling in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just tapped in right quick. You know, I'm out here in ATL. I had to make my transition from Tampa, and things have been going absolutely amazing for I, me. I, I just want to I want to congratulate you. Thank on, you. Uh, the new arrival and. You know, blessings all around, big air hugs right Yes, now thank you. you. You're doing such an amazing job out there. You guys, if you guys don't know him, um, what's your Instagram name? It's, what's your business uh, Instagram? K-R-E-S-S 813. Okay, okay. I wanted to make sure that was the right one you wanted to give out. So yeah, K-R-E-S-S 813. He does custom clothes. He does. He's amazing. He's an amazing artist. He's taught one of our painting in the trap classes before. You guys check him out. You need some honey ladies. Let me tell y'all something. He just did some shoes and a hat for a girl. I was just like, he killed that. So you you are you enjoying yeah, that? Yeah. So, so you say you're enjoying Atlanta. 
I'm enjoying Atlanta. It's, it's extremely prosperous, and um, it's been a blessing just to be out here and make opportunities with uh, people that that are in a demographic in which it's going to excel me to the next stage of my life as right. far as this art and this apparel. And I, right. I, you know, I have nothing to complain about. Even if I had a quarter, I wouldn't be able to call nobody about it. That's awesome. That's awesome. I am so yeah. proud of you. Keep up the good work. Keep doing what you're doing. He's somebody that followed the dream, right? He went to Atlanta. You, you cause when, when you do stuff like that, you don't know what's going to happen. But you have to keep the faith. You right. have to keep on pushing. So keep up the good work. I would love to have you live on the show one day. T, I love you. We love right. you. Thank you for all your support. Uh, I thank you. I love you too. And um, when as soon as I come down, it'll probably be midweek, so I'll definitely be out there for the trap talk on Thursday, and then we'll make it happen. I'll keep you in the loop with it when I'm coming home. All righty. All right. You be safe. Thank you. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Right. So yeah, y'all check him out. K R E S S eight one three. Hit him up. He'll make you some custom clothes. I mean, those the shoes that he did with pumps and a hat, honey. It was fire. Okay, it was fire. But. I said all that to say about the intimidation because I'm not the only one that has intimidated someone, right? No, you don't want to be disrespectful. You don't want to be mean to anybody. You need to be respectful and, and show and, and, and be kind. But if somebody is just uncomfortable with your presence because of who you are and you're not being nasty and none of that, bump them. They got some stuff to work on. Right, all the people around me. Um, Rick said to one of his free. I, we were talking. I was talking about one of my god sisters or something, and I was just like, "Yeah, you know, she a boss or something." And so, um, so one of one of Rick's friends had said something. And Rick comment was, "If she wasn't a boss, she wouldn't be around CJ." And that is so true. That is so true. Everyone around me who who's close enough to touch and feel and and to see the ins and outs of my day to day and to see the ins and outs of my family, they got certain stuff going on, right? Because the thing about it is if you have people around you that are not where you want to be, they're going to bring you down, right? You can't be the head all the time in your circles. It's just not going to be, it's not going to pan out to be a successful thing for you. You know, you have to have people around you that's going to make you better. You have to have people around you that you can make better and you, that you guys can just can help continue to grow. Don't have anybody around you that can't take your greatness. You can't have it around you because they're going to suck the life out of you. And before you know it, you'll be on the same playing field that they are. When you, you know, at one point you were the coach, right? You were the coach and they were the player and you were trying to coach them and teach them. Before you know it, both of y'all will be on the field and it'll be another coach. And you'll be wondering, how did I, how did I get demoted? Right? Not saying that life doesn't happen because life, life is full of ups and downs. Right? I've been learning that since I became a full-time entrepreneur. Life is full of ups and downs. You can do everything right and, and life will still throw a curveball at you. God will still want to teach you lessons. And that's just a part of life. But you ha and, and that's another reason why you got to have people around you that's going to help sharpen you because in those moments, everybody don't need to be broke. In those moments, everyone doesn't need to be down. Everyone doesn't need to be you know, have no motivation, right? You're going to be a bunch of people in a circle looking look the same way. Well, if, if it's depression, if it's whatever it is, everyone does not need to be there. Get people around you that can handle your greatness. You have to. So if I, if I intimidated you, I'm going to need you to, um, you got to find you something to do. Because I'm big. <laughs> Fine, you got to fight. No, 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 no. You got to find something. I'm talking to the people. You, I said, if I intimidate you, you have to find you something to do. Please find you something to do. Get you get you an agenda. You know, fill up your calendar. Boss up on me. Right? Because you should not be intimidated by my greatness. Because it's my greatness. There ain't nothing you can do about it. And I encourage everyone else to have their own greatness. And to fulfill whatever, whatever vision and dream that they have but remember what i wanted you to learn is in this in this season and this time don't let anybody make you feel on top of way about being great right and whatever that vision is and that dream is remember it is your responsibility at the end of the day it's not on anyone else it is not on anyone else it is your responsibility so i'm super 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 excited about what we're going to be talking about on the show, we'll be right back on Trap Talk Radio. And may, listen now, you know we, you know we got to talk about some of the the shootings and all that that's going on. So make sure that you guys call in. Write the number down before we go on break. 813-444-9588. And remember, if you haven't already, text someone to text someone. 813, I'm sorry, www.intouchnews.com. We'll be right back on Trap Talk Radio. 
I want to hear you guys' opinion. I want to talk about some of the some of the not so good things that's, that's happening in the world. So how can we prevent them? How can we move forward? But of course, we're always gonna bounce right on back with the positive. We'll be right back on Trap Talk Radio. experience in auto accident injuries. Call Ricky at 844-361-7425. After an auto accident, you have 14 days to seek medical attention. You may be in pain, so call Ricky, ask Ricky for your best options. 844-361-7425. Call Ricky, ask Ricky is a legal and medical referral service. The lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowridge Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. You got up this morning. You got up this morning. Eyes sneaking open as the feet hit the floor. Got to thank God for the rise this day. The stove perking the smell of nutrition. Get to your destination with planned unselfish acts. Bulletin board read, do you have any to spare? Happiness and understanding. We all have experienced that one phone call. Family member, co-worker, friend has passed on. We don't know our last evening or morning. Get up. Help someone out. Now walk it out. You got up this morning. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. You can reach out to DLD at DLD28002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Hey, this is Trap Talk Radio. Trap Talk, trap music, and trap possibilities with Madam CJ and Rick D with two C's. Anything else is disrespectful. Right here on In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everyone is a star. How y'all doing today? We thank you guys for listening in. If you haven't already, make sure you text a friend to text a friend to tune in to www.intouchnews.com and make sure you call me. I want to hear your opinion about what I'm about to go into. It's not the greatest thing, but I want to hear how you feel about it. 813-444-9588. Again, it's 813-444-9588. Yes. So we were just talking about, remember, I always start off with what I learned in the trap. And you can always call in throughout the show about giving your opinion about my little spiel. My thing is, look, when you have a vision, when you have a dream, at the end of the day, it is your responsibility to execute that dream. It is your responsibility to see it through. And sometimes we have people that's going to support us, that's going to help us. Don't feel on top of wave. They don't. They, they don't have that much passion for it, right? Because it is the, at the end of the day, it is your responsibility. How you doing? And then also. If you are intimid- if someone tells you that you intimidate them and you haven't been nasty and you haven't been mean and you know any of that, all you're doing is being who you are and you're being great at it. So what? They can find something to do. They got too much time to be worrying about you, right? Find something to do. Get you some business. Get you some business, right? So speaking of business, I, I, these these individuals should have been having something to do besides, you know hurting other people so there have been mass shootings like back to back right it's been about two weeks at this point um it was one in cali one in texas one in ohio what in the world is 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 going on you know it it saddens me because one of them was at a walmart you know a lot of times you think well that couldn't happen to me or maybe that wouldn't happen because i wouldn't be in that place okay you can't say that because it was walmart Right. It was Walmart. So that right there really, it, you know, of course, all of the shootings were, were horrible when people lost their lives. That that in, in our, our, our hearts goes out to them and our prayers. But at what point, like, how do you even try to regulate something like that? Right. Some people may say the gun laws and the NRA and 
What is it? If you have an opinion about it, call in at one three four 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 nine five eight eight. I want to hear how you feel about the shootings. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, yep, a four month old died. A four month old died. Like why? 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 I don't understand. Um, but yeah, these mass shootings have to stop, and they've been going on for way, way, way too long. You know, I mean, from schools to to stores to random places and honestly you know y'all go y'all may not like how I, what, what i'm about to say but some people may say you know only white people do this type of stuff right and that's not it, it is not it's, it's not nice you know we're calling out a particular race but i can remember the sniper in dc right it wasn't necessarily a mass shooting but he was going around the back of the car with his son shooting people random people you know i mean and and now what you say the mass shooters now the mass shooters, yes, they they were, but yes, they were all white. Yes, I will say that you are absolutely right. But what I'm saying is, having somebody crazy and, and and not in the right mindset that that can have access to a gun, that's just that's not just white people. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we can't just we just can't write these mass shootings off saying, oh well, it's just white people that do that. I mean, if they still gonna happen, we need to find we need to find a way to try to fix it and try to try to improve the situation. You know what I'm saying? Um. I don't know. I, I do believe that, you know, it, it's unfortunate that that our that um the person that is leading our country right now, he, he you know, his his response was all oh, mental, mental illness and all of that. And really, we need to have stricter gun laws. I do believe I mean, you know, we have a right to bear arms that's in the Constitution. I understand that. You know, what I'm saying somebody busts up in my house. I want somebody to have an arm. I want them to be bearing an arm. I want them to be bearing an arm. Um, <laughs> somebody yeah, busted yeah, my yeah. house. I want to be bear. I want somebody to be bearing an arm. You want somebody to be able to pull the trigger. Somebody, somebody in defense. Okay, okay, okay. Or, or in offense. Or in or in offense. Absolutely. Okay. Protect me and mine. Okay. Okay. I, I hear you. But I do believe that any and everybody should not be have access to just these these guns. And, and then the type of guns that we have. So what are we going to do about it? I don't know. I, I need, you know, you an OG. You the millennial. I'm a, I'm the millennial. I, I, that means she was civilian. Yeah, no, so, someone on my Facebook said, I just have an issue with civilians that are allowed to have powerful guns. That's kind of where I'm at, too. You know what I'm saying? I, I believe that we should have guns. But the, 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 the type of guns that these people are having, how did you get access to that? You know, what's up with that? I don't know. I don't even know what the answer is, y'all. Like, I can't say, oh, the answer is this or that. It's just a sad, and unfortunate situation. I feel like people that are in legislation, it won't, we can say that, it, you know, they won't do anything about it until it happens to them. We don't know that. I believe the NRA is a very powerful organization and they pay for a lot of stuff that the, that the United States benefit from. They pay for a lot of stuff that a lot of rich families benefit from. So they still have power. They have a lot of power. Um, if people do not believe that these organizations are controlling the way the world works and controlling the way our country works, you're crazy. You're crazy. I, you know, I guess my opinion and my resolution would be that civilians should not have civilians should not have access to certain types of guns. And I grant it, you can still take a regular gun and go into a place and shoot up a place. You know what I'm saying? That still can happen. But I just, I, something has to be done because it's happening too frequently. It's almost as if like, you know, you know how when you, when you hear something over and over again and your skin gets thick and it's like, it doesn't affect you the same. The fact that there's been three to four mass shootings in a matter of two weeks, that's unfortunate, right? I think it also, even though I do not agree with with, with President Trump's um, statement, I do believe that mental illness is an issue that we need to talk about. We don't, especially the African American community. We want to, we want to throw out a race. We don't talk about that in our community. We don't, you know. <laughs> and, I, I, and for my parents, they didn't necessarily do this to me. My parents are very open, and, and they're like, you know, if you know, if you need to talk about something, you can talk to me. Um, I might get fussed at just a little bit, you know, if I don't necessarily divulge everything, or if my mom's a little bit worried. But people need to be able to talk about things be, and be transparent with the issues that they have without being judged, right? And we don't necessarily have that. Communities need to be open. They need to be open. 
Hey, hey, Red, I would you Red, you just missed the gun conversation. Just missed the gun conversation. But we need to really be open about um about mental illness, right? If you have people that you need to check on, check on them. You know, that you see those memes that come out and say, Oh, check on this type of friend. You know, they are not okay. Check on this type of friend. They are not okay, right? They having a hard time. That stuff is true. Right. Those people, when they they say check on your strong friend because they're having a tough time, check on these people because you do not know what's going on. You see so many stories and you see so many situations where, oh, they say, oh, man, you know, I can't believe um, I can't believe that, you know, this person may have taken their life or I can't believe this person is abusing drugs because they seem so happy and they seem like they have it all together. So what? Right. So what? People have tough times. Life happens. Life happens, right? Be open to the people that are around you before they do a mess. You know, before that, you know, you never know how if people are having a tough time, how they're going to um, express that, right? They may express it and want to hurt themselves. They may express it and want to hurt people around them. So maybe that is another way that we also can ha- try to help um, with some of the violence that's going on in the country. When you have loved ones that you can try to help through these tough situations, if you if you hear something that one of your loved ones want to hurt somebody. Okay, we need to have a conversation about it, right? Why are we not talking about this? Why are we why are we not why why are we not giving these people support and 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 you know and giving them a refuge? That is, like I said, I do not agree with how he said it, what he said, but I do believe that there's some that there that there's something there. Remember, call in. Let me know how you feel. 813-444-9588. Again, it's 813-444-9588. Eight, eight. It's not, it's, you know, this is not the most fun conversation to have, but it's something that we got to talk about because this is the world that we're living in. We're living in it every day. I don't want to, I don't want to get wake up in the morning and hear that something that happened in Tampa at a McDonald's. Right? Like walking down, it's, it's almost like, you know, with these mass shootings, you can't even go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. I can't go to Walmart. Yeah, you can go. I, <laughs> I just need to have a gun with me. I need to be watching out. That's not, but at Walmart, now we got to watch out. Well, they sell guns at Walmart, so you don't need to carry one. Just go in there. It's going to if I want. Yeah, <laughs> go and buy me one. But, but you I mean, to bring your own bullets. BYOB. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dale said you like BYOB. Bring your own bullets to Walmart. I think, but you know what? I think oh my God. that's what, you know we got to be watching out. Don't be in these stores or going where you at and and not paying attention. And, and let me tell you. I, I ran into um, a real serious situation uh, with my with my wife. I was uh, at the St. Petersburg Airport picking up my wife. Recently. Recently. This was, what, three, four days ago? And um, it was about 10 o'clock at night. Uh, no cars out there. So I, I passed the point to where I was picking my wife up. And... Um, so I put, <clears throat> she called me, said, you passed me up. I put my car in reverse. I'm backing up, you know, looking over my shoulder. And I'm, as I'm backing up, I can see my wife in the rearview mirror. So I see her. And as I'm backing up, I can see, you know, the blue light flashing, the reflection of the blue light flashing against the airport. It was on the wall of the airport. So, you know, I could see some kind of police activity. Right. Well, uh, unbeknownst to me, the lights were on for me. I'm because I'm backing up in reverse. Um, and so he made his look, that kind of noise with his uh-huh, truck. You uh-huh. know? So at that point, I realized, oh, maybe he's talking to me. So I turned around and uh, the guy was saying, pull over. So, you know, I pulled over. I got out of the, I got to the lane closest to the curb. Okay. And while I'm doing that, of course, my wife is walking towards me. Uh, at this point, she's she's probably got a little light. She's run. scared, you know. She's scared, and so the the police officer, Officer Bowden, Officer B O D I N Bowden, uh, comes up to me. Uh, he approaches the car with his hand on his gun, and he's saying, "Why did you refuse my order? Why did you refuse my order? What you know?" And I was like, "It really scared me." So the first thing that I did was I put my, I put my hands, hands on the wheel on the wheels, and at first I started to say something, and then I said, "Okay, breathe." So I started to breathe. Now he's still saying something to me, 
And I said, okay, Daryl, before you respond, you really need to think about what it is that you want to say. Right. And um, because the situation was... Life or death. Life or death. Okay. And now, why it should have been life or it death... It shouldn't have been life or death. It's beyond me. But um, <sighs> so he um, he gets to the window. Now, first he says, let the window down. Let the window down. Why aren't you letting the window down? Well... You told me to cut the car off. I had to shout that out to him because the window was up. So I cranked my car up. I said, are you sure? I cranked my car up, and then I let the window down. Right. He asked me for everything. Driver's license. Uh, uh, um, uh, what it was? Insurance card. Registration. Registration. All that. I don't know what. It's, it's my daughter's car. I don't know what all that stuff is. I gave my driver's license. Because at that point, I'm a little pissed. You know? Right. You mad now. Because I'm a little bit, I'm a little better. I'm into myself. Make sure y'all share you this know, broadcast, it, please. Uh, uh, the, the first thing that's, that, that they want to instill in you is fear. Okay. So, and so and when they catch you off guard like that. Right. That's what happened. Right, right. Okay. You're scared. Especially a black man. Right. All right. Because I got a story just like we that. We already ahead. know what they're going to do with one of us. So I gave him all of those things. I said, hey, I'm reaching over here to get the, uh, um, what, what was it? Uh, registration. My registration. Right. I reach over, I get my registration, I pass it to him. So now I know he's feeling kind of like, because at that point, Tammy is screaming at the top of her lungs. <laughs> You must not know who I am. Ooh, I do, not you Tammy, listen, Tammy. All right. You listen, you that, and I know <laughs> this judge. I know this judge. Hey, this is Child Talk Radio. Who we got on the line? Hey, this is Jaleesa. How you doing? Hey, how are you? Good. So I just wanted to touch bases on the mental health mm. part that you were just talking about. Let's talk about that. So... I really believe that as a black community, we all need to, like you said, just come together and to really check on those who need it. Because right. sometimes people suffer in silence, and it could be something as little as, you know, just call them and see, hey, how you doing? How is your day? Or, you know, just spend the time with them or something like that, because you never know what someone's going through. So I feel like you know, in the black community, we all just need to come together. And it takes a village to raise, you know, a child. So I right. really feel like we just should come together and just support one of these, you know, all the, you know, everything. Like, support whoever's going through whatever, because you never know. And right. it could be family members, friends, people that you just, you know, just met. Like, you never know who life you can save. Absolutely. Wow. That's good. That is good. That's good, Julissa. Yeah, so I just want to touch bases with y'all on that. Well, thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. Thank you, Julissa. Make sure you share our broadcast. You're welcome. All right. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So she's absolutely right. If you if you know somebody that that you if you if it, I feel like if you feel it in your spirit, well, I reach know out somebody. to them. I, I know somebody. You know somebody that can help them. I, well, I know somebody that may have a mental health issue. Okay. Yeah. That police officer. Officer Bowden. Bolton. Okay, remember that. Officer yeah. Bolton. And where were you at again? And, and, and I'm not just going to stop at him. I'm going to stop at, I'm going to name all the officers that have shot young men, old men, middle-aged men, sisters and brothers, black or white, that have shot people for no apparent reason. Right. Okay. Now, we've all seen the video. We've all seen the videos. Right. And we've all come to our own conclusions. And I would I would venture to say that of all the videos that we've seen over the past two years, that 95 percent of those videos that we've seen, we've probably judged them as if the officer was wrong. Right. Probably. Right. OK. Um, and but unfortunately, 95 percent of those people have been uh, exonerated by our judicial system. Right. OK. So. Uh, so Tammy going off. So so Tammy going off. Let me get back to me. Tammy, so, so Tammy, Tammy going, going off. off. I'm like, baby. So she finally gets in the car. Please calm down. Don't say anything. What? So I said, baby, let me. I got this. I don't need. Y'all don't know Tammy Johnson, honey. Attention to the situation. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't so the mess officer, with her husband. So he he comes to he comes halfway to the window and says, okay, uh, I need you to step out. Come to the back. What? Yeah. So I get out. I get out. Um. 
and you know he goes to his spirit. Well, I'm not gonna do nothing to you. You know, uh, I be, I you know, because I I know that he knew that he might have gone a little too far. Right. But I, I, in the conversation that we had, I told him I said, you know what? I said, man, you really provoked this. Yeah. I said this was not even necessary. It's like you know I had robbed a bank or something. I'm just backing up in reverse to go pick up my, my wife. And you, and you probably can see her waving. I'm right here. I'm right here. So, and, and they could hear her. So, wow. you know, they already knew what I was doing. But he he provoked and pushed and, and, and antagonized me to a point. And now look, when I got out, he had a partner. So his partner stood over to the side. And so I saw... I saw the reaction and I told, I saw, I told officer Bowden, I said, you know, I said, it really screwed me up. And I used the F word. Uh, I said, it really screwed me up. I said, you know, me as a black man, you really know how I felt right then. Right. Right. Um, and, but I could see the reaction on his partner as if, uh, it was like, well, that's what we do. Mm. You know, it was a nasty look. And then I looked at his reaction and it was like, he chuckled. So I got from that. What I got from that interaction was they are trained to provoke us. They are trained to go over and above when it comes to us. Right. Period. Uh, and, and so we've seen it. So me saying this is nothing new to any of us. It's, it's okay. Okay. I don't want to interrupt you. No, no, I, I'm done. I just, you know, on it's, the way home, it was like, it, it could have went bad. It, it, it could have been bad. It could have been bad. Me, so a similar story. My dad and I was we were um getting some food. We were we ordered some food from Carabas, right? And um on the way to leave, we were we were, we were leaving we were on Harney, crossing over Fowler, mm -hmm. right, and turning to Morris Bridge. Yes. The car in front of us goes out, get hits on the side. Boom. Somebody ran the red light. I mean, literally, the car in front of us, boom. And, the, and the, even the car in front of us, they didn't even go at first. They, they waited a minute. So that person just wasn't paying attention, right? right. So we pulled over, so now we got out of the car, and, you know, we're helping everybody or whatever. And everyone, it was nothing major. But anyway, they had a, the, the person that was in front of us had a dog in the car, a little puppy. Mm -hmm. So they said they asked my dad to take him home. So it was the boy got in the car with us. We drove him home. Okay. But he needed to come back to the scene, of course, because he was involved in an accident, okay. right? So we come up to the we come up to the scene, and my dad's creeping up because the boy got it. He's involved in an accident, right? right. So we see a police car in the next to the turning lane. Yeah. So my dad's creeping. He's still going slow. He's going slow. And so we knew that the officers are probably because they were looking. One of them was looking. We thought they're probably yeah. gonna be wondering why didn't they? You why know they, why they why yeah. they going around or whatever. The man comes. The man come, he, he creeps up. We see the, the man, um, the, police the police officer, leave from the middle of the of the intersection. He was directing traffic. So my dad was like, um, son, you can get out of that. The, little boy that was, the boy that was with it was a black boy. He had to be like 20 years old. I said, daddy, he, he don't need to get out. He don't out. need to get out. Right. He don't need to get out. Right. The officer come up to the car. He comes up to the car holding his gun. Right. 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 To my dad. Right. He was right. just right. like, right. Why, right. Didn't right. Right. why didn't you right. stop? Why didn't you stop? Right. 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 So then my dad was like, sir, you know, he says, sir. And he's like, why didn't you stop? He says, sir, this kid in this car uh -huh. is a part of this accident. I'm bringing him to you. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing him to the accident. Why didn't you stop? He says, sir. And my dad, my dad sat there. My dad sat there and he just breathed. And I'm up there praying in, in my head because I'm yeah. just like, Oh, this man ready to fire something off. He ready. He was ready. So the kid in the back, I was like, that's why he wasn't supposed to jump out of this car. Right. Right. If he would have jumped out of that car, who knows what this officer, because I mean, he came there with his hand on the gun. On the gun. So the young black boy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he was just a part of the accident. Right. And so the man, the officer walked, stormed off, you know, stormed off. He didn't say sorry. So another officer came up and he was like, okay, so he's a part of the accident. And so he asked for his ID right. and he asked, he got my dad's information because we were witnesses. And so he was like, thank you, sir. Thank you for taking him. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I said, what is this guy's name? Right. Who is he? Who is this guy? You know, and so he was like, he said, the, the officer who was nice, I said, do you want to compliment him or you want to report him? I said, 
we need to report him. But because of his response, I said he that that it, his response let me know that that dude over there always giving people problems. Right. He said, "Do you you want to say something about him? Mm-hmm. Why why was that your response? I know. I know. Why was that your response? Do I want to say something about him or do I want to report him? Like maybe I know him. You know, maybe he went. I went to high school with him. You know, I don't know. But your response is, I want you want to report him. He always nasty. He always nasty. I mean, and it was not like I said. I understand." They were dealing with a lot of, you know, and it wasn't, mm. it was, it was at night. It wasn't a whole bunch of traffic. It wasn't, you know, whatever. But I felt like he came at that car ready for war. Ready, ready for war. And, you know, if, if, if guns were blazing or if there was uh, a lot of uh, uh, activity out there where people were arguing, right. you, would, you could understand that. But when it's still peaceful and calm, why do you bring that? negativity to the situation and that's what these guys are doing and i don't like it and i expect somebody to somebody gotta do task. somebody Without we'll be right back Trap talk radio hey So believe we hunted down. It was three, two, four, eight, six, and three hundred. Everything gonna be okay. Car Ricky, he coming. He taking kids to the floor to grab a pin of sun down. One eight four three six one Rick. That's one eight four three six Seven. one four two five. Never word from the point four. Just recline. Just ask Ricky. Push your boy stay by. Just in case you missed it, I'ma tell you one more time. One eight four three six one Rick. Call Ricky. Ask Ricky. Legal and medical referral service. The doctors and lawyers in our network are trained in handling auto injury claims and giving you the best medical treatment and recovery. Dial 1 844 361 Rick. That's 1 844 361 7425. Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ask Ricky. Hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecue? Come see them two brothers in the grill. Located at 423 Virginia Street, Charleston, West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some. And get you a nice, smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. <laughs> this is Trap Talk Radio, Trap Talk, Trap Music, and Trap Pop and Minutes with Madam CJ and Rick D with two C's. Anything else is disrespectful. And right now we got Darryl OG with Daryl. Daryl with two L's. <laughs> Rick D missed it today. <laughs> that is so funny. Talk about trap, Rick Trap Trap. trap. <laughs> He's so crazy. <laughs> if y'all do not listen to the radio on, on the radio link, that's something that Rick D does all the time. So make sure that you guys are listening. That's what we want you to make sure that you're sharing that link and letting people know. Uh, the OG Dare, he always cracks me up. But <laughs> we were just talking about, you know, some not so fun stuff. We were talking about the mass shootings. And, you know, I, I felt like my my opinion on that was I feel like we need to stricter gun laws. You never really said what you, what you feel like will change it. Well, well listen, I, I am uh, an LTC. You know what that is? License. To carry. Okay. So uh, I, I believe in in uh, in bearing arms, but bearing an AK forty seven. Now I want one. If they got one, <laughs> I got to have one too. But uh, it doesn't take all that, and so we do need to have something that uh, restricts. I'm hearing, I'm hearing that music. Um. Um. We just we got to get better control of of. Uh, of our gun situation. I mean, we're the only country in the world in this industrialized society that uh, we kill each other. The only one. I, I don't. I, I wish I would have found the link before I got on air, but I seen like a list of the countries that have mass shootings, and we're like in the two hundreds. Right. In the other countries, it may have been ten. Ten. With it's 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 so far. Off the Richter scale. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm just, I'm really disappointed. I'm disappointed with white America. Now. Okay. I understand their concern. 
see they they are fighting um they're fighting for survival it's uh, race survival this is really what this is all about now i, I know you don't want to hear this i'm going all off into it but this is is about race survival so um it's uh, it, it's it's my belief that it's their belief that you know you just want to just wipe off people that don't look like you just get rid of them any way you can and so that's pretty much what this is all about in, in my in my mind um okay yeah so we can talk that's a whole nother show that's a whole, that's a whole nother, nother show, show. Uh, but race it, survival okay it it it, 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 it all ha- it has a lot to do with the things that are going on in our world today uh-huh. such as these mass shootings you know these mass shootings are designed to get rid of us any way they can any way they can yeah one of the shootings like it was like a brother that killed that did the killing oh, don't kill guy down in texas got a sister oh 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 yeah he should and you know ohio, what, ohio ohio and let, let me tell you killed something. his sister when i heard uh. that he killed his sister they didn't have to say anything else about the story. It, that's it. That was it. You immediately knew she was dating a black guy. I did. I didn't know that. You uh-uh. didn't know that. See, you are, you are OG. Come you on know now. you pick up. So okay, 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 okay. White guy mm. kills his white sister. His sister. You. It was just. You knew he you, was dating a black dude. She was dating a black dude. Wow. That's a you lot of hate. You had to kill. You had. That's a lot of hate. That's a lot of hate. You would rather kill your sister. sister. That's some unnecessary hate. Why we got all this unnecessary hate going around? You know, there are wow. only, only one, like one or two people in your lifetime that you could think about that you might really hate. But and but you don't hate you him knew. enough to you knew kill him. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Mm, I didn't even have to wait on the report. Oh, she dating a brother. And you know, for that family, what is that? What what is that to have to say? No, you know, you my, know what my, that is? That's two children that they've lost. Right. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. By the hands of one of them. About, uh, yeah. Yep. That's sad. That's horrible. I gotta say, we had we had a funeral for my daughter that mm-hmm. my son. And, and, and you know, and you know, the boyfriend. I think he got wounded. <laughs> oh man! Mm. Oh, talk about poetic justice. Look, cause I know he wanted to kill him too, or maybe he was aiming at him and hit her. But that's how that type of stuff go when you have that much hate. Yes, and you want to take like that. That's how that. That's how that pans out. Yeah, not how you wanted to. Mm-mm. You end up killing yourself. I mean that that right Kill there was sister. just. And what I, what I thought she was gonna say is, um, <laughs> once you heard that it was that he had killed his sister, it was gonna be a representation of, like, of who he was. You know what I'm saying? But you said you knew he was black. I mean that you knew she was dating a black. Dude. I knew she was dating a black dude. Yeah, because only it's only that much kind of hate that see that's that that's an old plantation type mm-hmm. hate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that old plantation type hate. That's what it is, and and you know, unfortunately, okay. we've got we've got somebody in leadership that's spreading that kind of hate right. in our country. And you know what? I don't know who we was talking to, but I was who I was talking to. I just feel like he, um, he gives those people. Oh, it might have been here. He just gives those people a, a right. He gives them carte blanche. He gives them Y'all a do place. Whatever you want to do, so okay. gives them a place. Yeah. It's okay. It's it's almost like it's almost like uh, telling telling uh, uh, f- for lack of a better description, Islamic terrorists telling Islamic terrorists that you're going to have 25 virgins to when you go to heaven if you do this. Yeah, that's kind of the message that he's sending out. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. You'll be a martyr for this. That's just. It's sad. That's, it's called mental illness. Did, that's did mental Jamisha illness. Just, she just called about it, didn't mm-hmm. she? Okay. That's what it's called. It's called mental illness. And it's also called when you allow, what, what is it when you, when, you, um, when you know somebody's doing wrong and you still allow it to happen? Uh, what, what? 
Insanity. insanity. That's not insanity. Yeah. That's, well, it, it kind of it, it kind of is now. It's insanity now because our Congress has allowed this man to continue to do yeah. the same over thing and over, and over, over and over and over. Yeah. So he's not crazy. They are. Right. Right. They got to do something quick, quickly, my daddy would say. They have to do something quickly because we are way beyond the, the point to where uh, we are afraid of what he might do. Listen. You know what he going to do. Well, ain't, no, ain't no blueprint. Well, you, you know that uh, Moscow Mitch, Moscow Mitch has, uh, you know, accepted uh, his, his, his state accepted money from, from a, a, a Russian affiliate company. To, for, so they gave him $200 million, $200 million to do uh, an aluminum factory in Kentucky. Now, while that's good for the Kentuckians, they got jobs. They're right. happy. Right. But the truth of the matter is, is that um, they funneled that money in you know, through Moscow Mitch. And so if you're wondering why ain't nothing getting done in Congress, well, just ask Moscow Mitch. Because when, once you start taking money from foreign governments. You got to do what they say. You got to do what they say. Subject to that. Okay, yep. so if nothing is getting passed in Congress because Moscow Mitch won't bring it to Congress to be voted on, then you got to wonder. Watch the show, Trail, mm. Trail of the Ozark or Ozark Trail. I'm just saying. It's on Netflix. And what Mr. Darrow's talking about, it, it, it has to do it has something to do with um the cartel, but it's a similar thing. Right. They, they were laundering money. Through this particular guy, yeah, and he had to do what he they said. You, you got to do what they. You, that's it. They it's were showing up to his house. And, and look, don't get don't get it wrong now. It's not just Moscow, Mitch, right? Okay? Right. It's not just uh, uh, um, uh, allegedly Donald Trump. It's several other um, um, politicians yeah. as well. Several other but politicians know, as know well. that is going on. And, and and quite frankly, I think have been getting paid through some kind of Russian affiliate. And so they are quiet. They are uh, um, co- uh, uh, complicit in, in all the ills of our country. And so I just need the Democratic Party to go ahead and get some gonads and do what it is that needs to be done to stop the foolishness. We... And, you know, and we're going a little bit over time, but we're going, and I, I want to table this for the next show, but the election is coming up. Mm. Which one? Well, we're going to have to do the... The, um, the presidential election? Yes. Okay. We're going to have to pick the Democratic um, candidate. Okay. We got to make sure we vote in all of that, but we're going to hold that off. Who you like? I'm not going to say. You scared? I ain't did enough research. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't did enough research yet. I gotta do it because my parents will be talking, looking at me like, you need to make sure that you know what's going on. I have not did enough research. You know, you need to question your parents. I should question yeah. my parents. Question both of them. Who you like? I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna, Who you like? This weekend, I'm hanging out with my daddy. Yeah. So that'd be a great conversation. That's a great conversation. Well, we'll be back next week right here on Trap Talk Radio. Yeah. Make sure you guys. Mark your calendar, set an alarm, let people know that you'll be riding the trap next Thursday at 8 p.m. Have a good week. Peace.